thanks you guys for for coming. There may be uh, a couple more joining us. I'm not sure, but uh, as I just mentioned to Benjamin, the 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 main intent of starting these meetups was to um, to have a, a place where where business can have a voice because very unlike most industries. Uh, Crypto was started by devs and continues to be dominated in some ways by devs. So this is a place where a business can have a voice and make sure that uh, our priorities are heard and we just have a place to talk as well. So, um, uh, cool. yeah, so thanks, thanks for coming. Um, the topic that I set up for, for this time's discussion was about um, paying with crypto. Like just specifically, what has been your experience with with paying with crypto, um, with BCH specifically for for general protocols, um, and whether it's worked for you or it's caused problems for you or just in general how it's worked out? Did, Benjamin, do you guys do payments with crypto? How does it work for you all? Well, so my my staff, so we're 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 here based in Thailand, right? And um, I've got uh, we're we're at twenty eight people now. And uh, although we do have one in Canada and we have a contractor in, in Germany, Germany guy uh, takes crypto, but he's not a full-time person. Ah. Um, all the local staff, um, the, it's, it's legal here. And in fact, Bitcoin Cash is fairly, I mean, there, there is just about everything you want you can buy. There's a lot of restaurants in particular uh, that, that take crypto thanks to um, Jaja is uh, a big promoter here. And uh, she's with she's one of the Satoshi's angels and has a, a thing. So so there's some pretty good adoption. But in order to convert it to Thai bot, um, the exchanges here uh, have pretty high percentages, and it's a pain in the ass to to get the uh, the, um, uh, the 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 anti money laundering uh, registration stuff, all, all the all the credentials to to open up an exchange account. So it's difficult for uh, locals to get paid in it. However, I will say that I'm very happy to announce that uh, I convinced my my lawyers to uh, start taking uh, BCH. And that's um, huge. And uh, especially when you see the amount of money that I'm paying them. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Lawyers are like the last people ever who who are yeah. willing to talk about crypto. So that's that's excellent. Yeah, that was, that was that was pretty cool. Very nice. OK, that that's cool. Cool. Um, Roger, but my, but my, I, my staff in general is is very much pro crypto. It's just it's just not uh, very practical uh, for them in, in terms of, you know, being able to to live day to day on it, you know. Okay, nice. There's one of our regulars, Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> and Ben, uh, maybe I, I can suggest just giving the option of, uh, you know, 10% or 20% of their pay and make it optional to receive some sort of percentage and that'll help uh, spread the ecosystem that way as well. But totally up to you, of course. Yeah, I, I, um, I honestly, I haven't, I haven't, Thought about it so much in terms of that. Um, we've been more focused on setting up so businesses could accept crypto, and so my my company, um, which is if you go to biggestband.live, you'll see you'll see what we do. Um, it accepts crypto. We we do real time uh, performances uh, with multi way, uh, so uh, like the audience and the and the performers all see each other and all that, and so you can do real time tipping in that. And the first thing that we do in real time tipping was was BCH, and we did that on a show uh, last month. And um, also, my wife owns; she just launched a lingerie and swimwear company here in Thailand, and uh, they take um, they take crypto, at, at, well, actually specifically they take BCH. Um, so we focus on that. And honestly, I mean, I, you know, I like like I feel like I'm the I'm the cobbler's uh, you know, these are my, my staff are the cobbler's uh, kids. You know, they they do crypto and build crypto, but they don't wear it. <laughs> the cobbler's and and I, I should I, I haven't I haven't made the push for it. And, and I'm ashamed to say that I should I, I will try. I, I will present this as a option. Of course, now it's kind of wavy. It's kind of, you know, it might be a hard sell. But as soon as things start going up again, that might be more of it. Um, also, as a startup. I'm already convincing, you know, some of my staff to take uh, some of their pay as equity. <laughs> so it's like well, that's a double ask now, crypto equity and and Thai bot. Right, that's tough. We we found um, for GP we 
basically our story is that we fully prioritize uh, all relationships that, that accept BCH, right? Mm. So uh, somebody's echoing, if you could mute yourself. Mute yourself. So uh, we, we accept, uh, we, we highly prioritize cryptos and, um, it, and we, it, we, I just found a, an interesting thing recently where um, for, for employees, for, for team members, actually we don't have employees, we have all contractors, but for our team members, um, because we, we do that and, and we, we're very upfront about it, right? When we start hiring people, we're, we're, it's one of our requirements. Hey, uh, if this doesn't work for you, then you know, probably things aren't gonna, aren't gonna work out. And so uh, one thing that we found is that uh, like we're, we're bringing developers in from completely outside of the BCH ecosystem, right? They've never touched BCH before. But just by doing that up front, we're kind of pre-filtering for people who are, are just generally more open-minded about business and, and money and, and how things work. And um, yeah, so we've had very little conflict or issues around uh, payments with crypto just because we're upfront about it. And, and it's been, it's been interesting, but, but I think Roger maybe has the most experience out of anyone about paying in crypto. What have you learned from it, Roger? Uh, I always offered uh, as an option. Uh, people like to have options. Uh, it's not as useful for you in Thailand there, Ben, but uh, in the U S or Japan, we have purse.io where you can mm -hmm. tell everybody, they can save you know 10 15 20 percent off every purchase from amazon uh that's really really uh, you know people's eyes you know get biggest saucers when they hear that and and uh and they just love it and pretty much everything in my own life i'm ordering through purse.io uh you know via amazon they're using bitcoin cash there um so i don't know long story short give people the option uh and you know i'm glad your your business and your wife's business are accepting you know bitcoin cash and there's a bunch of restaurants in uh in bangkok there that are accepting bitcoin cash and here in tokyo as well but if there aren't people with bitcoin cash meaning that they're earning it because they're being paid in it there's not going to be any customers to frequent those businesses that do accept it and if they don't ever get a customer paying with it for months and months then uh, eventually they're gonna lose interest and uh and fall off the the bitcoin cash bandwagon uh so i think it's important to have not only businesses accepting it as payment but also businesses paying their their employees in it so uh you know please uh, consider giving your your people uh, the option there don't you don't have to make it mandatory but at bitcoin.com there's 100 and something people all of them are paid 100 percent in bitcoin cash and the way we handle that is uh we tell them that if the price drops more than like five percent within i think we give them 48 hours of when the payout is uh we'll top them back up to whatever the fiat value is of what they're supposed wow. to do and then i'm sure lots of them are probably using uh the any hedge uh platform there that general protocols built the back end stuff for uh to hedge their their cryptocurrency in in fiat terms so nice okay so five percent to give them a chance in case the exchange there's some slippage or whatever then okay oh, oh, nice. oh, the, 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 it's not so much exchange slippage it's it's price fluctuation so like if you know let's say we owe you know five thousand dollars for the month and we send them you know five thousand dollars but then suddenly the the exchange rate plummets down to four thousand dollars. You know, three mm. hours after we paid them, and maybe they were asleep because <laughs> there's you know, people all over the world. We we top them back up so that they get their you know full amount uh, that they're promised each month. And so so their salary is denominated in fiat terms, but the payouts are all in BCH. Mm. I see. They, yeah, that's the same thing we do. Ours ours are denominated in Singapore dollars, and we pay out in BCH. Yeah. Yeah. Same deal. And. Uh, Ramit, are you guys you guys uh, paying in crypto? Um, yeah. Uh, fortunately, I found employees that are uh, you know I mean I convinced them that uh, Bitcoin, getting paid in Bitcoin Cash is better than getting paid in rupees. Yeah, so, man. Yeah. T talking with with uh, candidates from India has been really interesting. Like pretty much the first thing everyone says is, "Well, it's illegal," and I'm like, "Well, it's not," but. Okay, everybody. <laughs> it's it's a very confused yeah, situation in India with the media saying different things. Yeah, it's just the media that um, says that, but there's no government ruling that it's illegal. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, uh, we also pay our employees completely in crypto. Nice. And actually, that that brings up uh, what Roger was saying. Hundreds of people. That that like makes me have a a panic attack because there's not a whole lot of infrastructure around doing payroll 
in Bitcoin Cash or just crypto in general. And um, like, it's time consuming. Roger, how do you guys do that? Do you have any idea how, how you actually do the, uh, the payouts? Have you guys developed some kind of internal systems or anything for that? Yeah, and I think there's a, a spreadsheet somewhere that has everybody's. Ad- we're not asking for fresh addresses each month. Ah, so okay. We're, we're using addresses for each person each month. Uh, hopefully, we can get everybody to give us one of their uh, reusable payment uh, addresses now from the new Electron Cash Wallet, which uh, uh, I'm you know a big fan of. And then we can just use that, and then people will have a, a bit more privacy on on that front as well. Um, I, I guess. Uh, oh, what was his name? Um, who was the big Bitcoin Cash Fusion uh, big brain guy here in Japan? Uh, Mark, Mark Lundberg. Mark Lundberg, yeah. I, I, he's probably the right one to talk to, but I, I keep, you know, the, my paranoid brain keeps thinking that, you know, that I'm, governments obviously don't like a lot of what crypto is enabling people to do. Oh, yeah. Uh, on the Cash Fusion front, I've, I'm concerned that they're going to try and run a whole bunch of other fusing nodes so that they can spy on it. So, like, let's say there's like five participants in a Cash Fusion. Uh, but four of the five are like, you know, chain analytics companies. Yeah. And there's only one actual person. Yeah. Uh, I'm thinking that maybe using, and again, Mark is probably the right guy to talk to about it, but maybe you have some thoughts on this too. If we were to have all the different payouts that everybody's signing for, for the cash fusions being the reusable payment addresses, uh, that might obscure uh, and make cash fusion even way more private than it is already. <laughs> Maybe. And so that's been bouncing around in the back of my head for a couple of months now. And, and again, uh, if you have any thoughts on that, uh, you know, feel free, but I, I would like to be able to make cash fusion even more private. So like if four of the five participants are, uh, you know, chain analytics company, it still doesn't matter. They still can't figure out, uh, where, whose money is going where. Yeah, so. that, that would be fantastic if we can do that. Um, I think the, the RPAs, mm. the reusable payment addresses, do uh, depend on specific information between the two parties. So it mm. may not work directly, but but that's exactly like you said. That's a big brain question that uh, <laughs> that Mark, or, or maybe Benjamin, if, if you've looked into it. I know Benjamin is, is deeply technical as well, but I'm not sure how much time you've spent looking at Fusion. I, I'm... I have not looked into the the details of it um, in in terms of how they've actually gone and done it. So I, I don't uh, I, I couldn't I couldn't answer that. Okay, uh, it, is other, an it is an interesting thing. Yeah, one other fun side note on that too is the the current Bitcoin.com wallet team had a really really hard time trying to figure out how they could even get it to work on a mobile wallet. Yeah, and so uh, so I yeah. gave uh, Johnald uh, a bit of a stipend to try and get it working on the Electron Cash mobile wallet. And hopefully he'll be successful with that. And if he is, then then I can go back to the Bitcoin.com team and say, hey, these other guys did it. You guys did it. Yeah, <laughs> it, wait to do it, too. it is possible. Yeah, that's a big yeah. one just to say it is possible. Yeah, yeah. The mobile has extra difficulties because of uh, because of Tor, the requirement for Tor, right? Yeah, and then it has to run in the background. Which yeah. Mobile apps can't do too they, much. They, don't, they don't like background stuff, yeah. Yeah. Okay, interesting. So as far as the payments goes, you guys have some kind of semi-automated system with fixed payout addresses. You know, and for, for anybody who's watching this or in the group right now, the reusable, the RPAs, reusable payment addresses um, will be absolutely huge because it'll be exactly like Roger said, where uh, you can give somebody a single address and then you can continuously receive to different addresses. Or, or the other the other thing too is like let's say you're running a, a restaurant somewhere and you're yeah. accepting Bitcoin cash, but you just have it on a piece of paper and a QR code there that you're accepting. You don't want every single customer or the tax man or whoever else coming in and knowing exactly how many crypto payments you've received. Whereas now with this RPA code, you can use the same code over and over, and none of the people paying you know what other people have paid you. So it's really yeah. a fantastic way. It, it makes the Bitcoin cash addresses. Uh, basically like Monero addresses and that the yeah. people paying don't know what other payments you've received. And that's uh, that's very, very, very important, I think, to the fungibility of, of Bitcoin Cash. Yeah. And without having to give new addresses every time, that's a huge, um, yeah, it just can't be overstated how nice that will be. And um, additionally, of course, it's worth saying that you can still reverse that process, right? So as a, as a business owner, you can still fully audit and transparently audit everything and show, hey, I, these are all my numbers. Um, so, so it's not a, I don't know, from my perspective, it even has a, an advantage over Monero where I can actually prove to you all the things that I've done. Um, if necessary. Yeah, if this, necessary, this actually, if you want to. Right? 
This yeah. actually solves a problem that we have um, for the, the the tipping application because we don't we don't know what the wallet address is of the person who is sending the tip, and we want to credit them right. The the fact that they gave a tip pops up in the middle of the show saying so and so gave a tip, and and so what we do is we have to generate a new address for every single tip so that so that we know that it belonged to the person who is sending it rather than identifying who the receiver is. And then we have to have a separate piece of software that's tracking all these addresses belong to this performance. But if you had that kind of addressing scheme, that just kind of takes care of it for you. You now have the reusable address for the performance, but every time somebody sends a tip, we know that the address that got associated is gonna identify the sender um, in terms of giving them credit for the tip. So uh, right. that's, that's a, that's a yeah. pretty cool feature that we would, we would, we, we need to incorporate this actually. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's <laughs> that huge. Saves a lot of bookkeeping. The, the cost is that there is um, some computing cost involved on both sides, which is uh, non-trivial. So yeah, yeah, it, it needs to be sorted out and experimented with and tried out, but I think it's gonna be a big, big deal. Um, can I get a quick uh, mic check? Oh, I see Marcel joined us. Is that right? I can't see the name here. Hey, what's up, Marcel? And I see Cameron. Just want to say hi to Cameron. Cameron uh, just joined also. Awesome. Yeah. Really appreciate you, Cameron. Hey guys, love you guys too. <laughs> We're just talking about the uh, the pain and joys of uh, paying people with crypto. Have you had any uh, specific good stories with with that? Has it worked for you or not worked? I think I do most of most of my work in crypto these days. Um, as a matter of fact, I have to pay someone with fiat now, and it's actually kind of weird. It's just like I'm, I'm literally going to pull out Japanese. I'm going to get paid in crypto and then change it to yen and then go deliver it to them over lunch or something. Oh, man. Um, but oh, oh, I do have an interesting one. Um, I'm working with I do work with people in Venezuela sometimes where fees are obviously a big deal. And the weirdest one that's come up lately is somebody's asking me to pay them in USDT on the Tron network specifically. Mm. Yeah. Um, the the other option equally good is Bitcoin Cash. That's so obviously I went with that one, but it's just very interesting. Like uh, even USDT Tether, I, I've had people say that they want USDT, you know, uh, ERC twenty. But this is the first time where someone's like, no, it's got to be got to be on Tron. Just Tron, the Tron, Tron is the main net. Tron is their primary network now wow. for USDT. Yeah. Wow. And actually, while while we're all on this call, like I think everybody sh in Bitcoin Cash, I don't think they are aware of it, but they should be aware of this Flex USD stablecoin mm -hmm. from the CoinFlex guys. Like they pay you interest right there on chain to your wallet, and then you can swap it back out to USDC on on you know ERC twenty anytime you want, and then you can you know do whatever you want with it from there. Uh, and it works right there in the Bitcoin.com wallet. You can bounce it around. I I really am a a big fan of a uh, flex USD and any stable coin, anybody ever pays me, I'm just converting it right there into, into flex <laughs> USD until I, until nice. I buy sport ECH or whatever else I do with it. So, and it'll sit there. Yeah. The SLP is nice. You have to, uh, consolidate it every once in a while, but yeah, it just sits there on your, your wallet and just pays you every eight hours. Actually flex USD pays out every eight hours. Mm. It's interesting stuff. Yeah, the, the USDT in Venezuela, I've actually heard the same. So I'm working with somebody right now to come up with a, like a very small investment opportunity for their, their business. They want to do something with BCH. And um, they're like, so we're going to accept BCH and USDT. And I'm like, <laughs> USDT is on top of BCH as an SLP token too. You guys can, anyone yeah. can withdraw from Bitfinex, but uh I kind of feel like Bitfinex's heart isn't really with it, but I also think part of why Tron got so much traction is they have the easy multi-sig wallets for the USDT. Uh, I know Bitcoin.com, it's taken forever, but I know the team is actively writing the code and working on re-adding a multi-sig to the Bitcoin.com wallet. So you'll be able to do multi-sig, you know, USDT or Flex USD or BCH or whatever else you want in there. And uh, that, that'll be pretty useful. With it all coordinated, like it was on the old copay wallet yes yeah, so similar similar to that and we'll we'll see what the final product is once it's out but uh yeah similar to that 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 will be so nice um yeah multi-sig is a big time sink and it takes a lot of education i i spent uh quite a significant amount of time educating people how to use multi-sig and um you know to 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 operate as a founder company founders wallet or as a uh investment wallet or something like that so 
yeah, that would be very nice to have something. Yeah, it'll, that doesn't it'll require so much expertise. And same for 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 payroll. Uh, I, I practically think about general protocols. I'm like, maybe our next app should be a payroll app, just for me. <laughs> I think a lot of people would appreciate uh, some sort of uh, payroll accounting app software suite. It, it, Cor Corbin worked on a thing a long time ago called Broccoli, the Broccoli app. And it was basically a, a, a payroll app. It just had some issues where like it would pay out everybody in a single transaction and stuff like that. So it was a little bit iffy on the on the privacy side. But but yeah, they, they did it up for a hackathon, I think. You know, I have to say, I know it's like super unsexy, um, but just and like no, like I, I don't even want to bring it up. Usually when I talk to cryptocurrency people, just how important having like good tax tools would be. Um, like it took me, I don't even want to talk about how, how long it took me to get cryptocurrency payments comfortably into QuickBooks and the system I had to come up with for it. Um, and I mean, like, yeah, I get the whole, like, you know, no tax thing, like that's fine. But like, I think that there's a lot of people that are like, would like to just know how to do things without being a criminal, you know, so like, um, for whatever reason. Right. And so like, I just, I feel like no one wants to tackle it, but like for crypto payments, um, yeah, it feels like a really hard sell for me. I don't think anyone's going to hear me say that and be like, yeah, let's do that. But like, if you could get payroll and like a nice clean tax system, that would be wonderful. I, I think that that rolls into the same thing that you and I have talked about a lot, Cameron, which is just bringing uh, more business onto BCH and, and getting more businesses interested in using it. Once that happens, all that stuff will just poof, it'll just magically happen, right? Because there's going to be a demand yeah. for it. And uh, yeah, there's already an internal demand. Like everybody who's ever had to do it is like, is now an, a clear demand <laughs> for that stuff. Right? Yeah. Or, or I tools. guess the other the other option is just with those new, uh, the FATF guidelines that was posted on our Bitcoin a week or two ago. Yeah, which basically amount to give up. Yeah, we'll, <laughs> right? we'll give up using or, or just stop trying to play in their garden and just stop trying to ever convert to fiat. It's almost like, it was like I'm not saying that this is the way, but it's like, just like, just stop trying to interact with them. Or just say like, <laughs> right. fine, we'll do peer to peer stuff and right. we won't ever try to convert it to yen right. or USD. Right, yeah, I'm pretty much resigned to being a high risk individual at this point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people in the world about to get classified as such, we'll see. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, actually just, yeah, moving on from, from the payment stuff, th there is a, another kind of interesting aspect, which I don't think anybody's really making use of, but which is, you know, the idea that with crypto, you can, um, you can do m more interesting payment arrangements. Like, you know, somebody, I remember reading, they had the, the idea that when you're a, a, a worker, you know, when you're a, when you're waiting tables at a restaurant and somebody pays the bill, they don't, pay the restaurant and then the restaurant pays you. They pay a piece to you and they pay a piece to the restaurant. So th there's some interesting things that you can do with crypto because of the low friction that aren't really possible. But I don't think anybody's really making use of those yet. Are, are you? Has anybody heard of something like that? Well, we're, we're setting this up for our live performances. Oh, really? Because, um, yeah, so, so what, we, what we believe is that what we're creating is the first legitimate business model for music on the internet, right? Because the internet destroyed the pre-recorded music industry and nobody's been able to figure out anything that allows the venues and the promoters, which are really the people who do the business hmm. along with the artists and the fans to, uh, to, to get their cuts. And so what we are going to be doing is setting up performance contracts when there is a performance that already sets in place. Okay. The, the promoter gets this percentage, the band gets this percentage, the venue gets this much and you know, whoever all else is in there. And as the ticket sales uh, come in, um, it will be allocated immediately across that. And so everybody, cause there's, you know, music business, there's a lot of, there's a lot of fraud <laughs> and who gets paid what in there, especially the artists getting screwed, really? right? A whole, a whole bunch. And so now everyone could actually look, you know, if they know what the, what the, what the key accounts are that, that is going in, everyone can see that everybody got paid their, their due. Um, and so that's, that's a key part of, of what we're offering in, in our platform is when you set up an event, you can set up the relationship between 
who all is going to get what cut. And, you know, there's, there's various stage levels. It's not just a strict percentage necessarily. It's like, you know, like a, like a band would get like a guarantee of 30,000 bot. So the first 30,000 bot goes to them. And then after that, it's all split this way. So it, it can get, it can get fairly complicated, but we want to build that. Um, we want to build that. I, th I think if, if PMV three comes in, um, this coming May or whatever is going to be the equivalent of it. I think we could do the entire thing in a decentralized uh, contract. Right now, it's it's a little bit too complicated to uh, represent on on BCH directly. Although we could do it, we could represent it in smart BCH. Um, I'm I'm waiting to see how easy it is to move stuff between the chains before I uh, be before I commit to that. But that's going to be an interesting technology. But yeah, we, we're going to make our intention is to make that as decentralized, to make that a, a, a pure contract um, decentralized so that, you know, there's it's, it can be a, it can be a trustless model. Right. So the because the, the promoters and the and the artists might be on different continents and never meet each other. Nice. And so how are you going to trust it? And, and typically a band gets paid immediately after the performance, like like as soon as they get off the stage, here's your money. Kind of a thing and so you want something that enables that and that's hard to do with uh with with fiat if you're on a if, if it's if it's remote right because you got to do bank transfers and all that and artists aren't very well banked so uh, crypto oil becomes a good option for this so i, I think it's it is, it is one of the disruptive aspects that we're that we're promoting when we talk to bands and and promoters about this that is awesome yeah, those those types of arrangements definitely going to become more more powerful with with the evolution of, of BCH because I mean as I, I think most people here know the UTXO based development just totally stalled in 2017 like just totally went off a, off the rails so yeah we're we're getting back to it and and that kind of thing is going to become possible but yeah it needs some time. Um, I'm looking forward to that too. Actually, the aspect you mentioned about the the kind of everybody can see that things are are going as they're supposed to go. I think that's a huge one that's underestimated. Like um, with any hedge, you can you can have uh, for for example, if you had like a stable coin, then you could prove the backing of it, right? W which is something that's clearly a uh, uh, has been an ongoing issue since the beginning with with tether and other stable coins. But being able to to at least just point to it and be like, it's right there. You know, <laughs> you can see it. Um, that that's that's a very nice thing to be able to do. And like you said, with with further um, uh, smart contract capabilities, it'll just become more integrated and more trustless. So that'll be nice to see. Yeah, I know everyone you know talks about the the secrecy and privacy aspects of, of crypto. Which I mean, as a crypto person, that's that's key to me. But every time I'm talking about it, um, I'm I'm always talking about the transparency aspects of it. So. I was we were we were launching a we were launching a coin that was on Stellar um, a few a few years back and I don't know if you know Thailand's SEC has put forward some very progressive uh, rules uh, regarding crypto just like shocking that this came out of Thailand and it, and it's and it's run by a bunch of ladies and they're really smart and they get it and um, but the anti money laundering ministry here is freaking insane they just they don't they don't get it they don't understand it. Um, they, the, the KYC requirements to transfer 100 million bot is the same as transferring one bot on, on crypto. And so it, it so it sort of cripples the thing. I actually set up the first meeting that had the head of the NM Money Laundering Ministry and the head of the SEC in the same room together to talk this out. And the point that I made to them is like, look, you know, you guys are concerned about this anti-money laundering stuff, but it's so hard for you to get the information about it. It's all on the freaking blockchain. You can watch it as it happens. You don't even need to, you know, have a subpoena. And I pointed out, you know, like Jack Ma has his own private freaking currency that's got a bigger capitalization than the GNP of most countries on the planet. And you just have to trust him about this stuff. And it's moving money all over the world. You have no idea what's what's going on there. And if you just let us do it on crypto, you would see what all the transfers were and you have a good idea of where it's going and businesses are going to be using fairly public addresses. So you're going to, you know, it's going to be easy to weed this stuff out. So the transparency aspect I think is the big sell for, you know, le legitimate classical businesses um, to, you know, protect them because banks can't do banking anymore because of all the overhead of the anti-money laundering stuff and the KYC requirements. They're just, they're simply being put out of the business. Um, it's, it's, you know, I think, I think they're going to force people like you were saying earlier that you're going to have to be crypto. Yeah. You know what I, I wanted to say too, like usually my stance is to not 
pick fights with governments. You know, like I might not be a fan, but like, you know, it's like why well, I start a fight I can't win. But I do have to say that the AML stuff might have to be a fight that starts. We might have to start some kind of grassroots thing against that because that's it seems to be that that is where the big problems come up. And it's such a dumb thing. Like the whole the whole concept is dumb and it just gets in the way of everything. And like you said, it slows down traditional banking, too. So I don't know. I'm sorry, I don't have any actual thoughts on that other than like that might be a problem we have to face. At some and, point. It, and it doesn't work either. Right. Like it's yeah, completely it ineffective work. at its at its intended goal as well. So, yeah, well, it's, it, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah. Right. So they're concerned that people are going to do transfers that can't be tracked. And now we can't do transfers. They've locked up the entire banking system. So now yeah. we have to move off of it and do transfers <laughs> right. that can't be tracked. Right. Yeah. It's like, yes. you know what? I, 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 don't I don't think I don't necessarily think that's an accident. You know, here's my parents. Well, I, I often think that same kind of thing about, uh, you know, like freedom of speech stuff on the Internet. So it's like they take people that like want to talk about one thing. And they're like, no, you can't talk about that. And so they force them into like the, the deep, dark abyss of the internet, <laughs> where then they're forced to be like actually radicalized. And I just think it's the funniest thing ever. So it's the same thing. It's like, hey, we don't want any terrorism. So don't buy bubble gum without telling us. And like, OK, so I'll just use Monero then. OK, the, the, term, <laughs> the term for that is triangulation. And is it, it is a way it is a it is a specific mechanism to, you know, cast out uh, opposing positions and and make mm -hmm. them look radical so they aren't considered check out triangulation because that that is a that is a specific way of of, of attacking specific an, an opponent political views without having political capital to do so Interesting. well just a real quick t is there a tldr of how to get around it or is it not solved yet no it's very effective <laughs> okay okay that's what i was afraid of because <laughs> i don't have it yet yeah i, I was I was I mean, gonna transparency mention, is, is what you have to have. You know, you I, have to, yeah, yeah, I was going to mention one more aspect because I think that is a really important point, Ben, that, um, and this is maybe one of those quiet things that you don't say out loud in public too much, but... Um, on, re on recorded voice chats? Yeah, those are fine. <laughs> those are fine. <laughs> because because uh, the transparency that we're talking about, um, like in, in contrast, like a CBDC, right? Um, is going to advertise transparency, but you know, 100% chance that that transparency is going to be one way, right? It's going to be a one way um, mirror type type situation, right? You're not going to have visibility into into the Fed's book because of this or into their transactions or whatever, or who they're paying. So one of the, the, the great things about the transparency that we're talking about is that it's actual transparency, right? It's actual full transparency on on all parties there, there's no um i mean there is going to be asymmetry there always is asymmetry in, in information but the asymmetry is going to be incredibly less orders of magnitude less than than what exists now or than what it would exist with the cbdc so um yeah i think that that's a, a big aspect to to discuss as well although that may not be the talking point when you're talking with a uh with a government i don't know <laughs> Not sure. Talk about other governments. Those guys are going to have to be transparent. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, I mean, a quick, quick summary to that might be, I think this is what you were trying to get at earlier, Ben, is that the way to solve the triangulation, the impossible solve, is to just go full transparency on our side and just be like, no, we're, we're even more, we're better than you are at the job <laughs> before, the, before they get a chance. Maybe so. Uh, when, when, when Facebook announced their, you know, currency and was trying to get that pushed out. I was a big proponent of it, even though it was not legit crypto, because I knew that as soon as, you know, some big article comes out that somebody's coins got locked up, <laughs> that it would be the gateway drug to legit crypto, right? Everyone would, everyone would suddenly understand the difference, you know, um, that it can be locked up. So, so maybe these CDBCs will, will be that. Man, but, they, uh, they shut that down so fast. It was incredible. Yeah, was hard. I mean, yeah. just, that got slapped down so hard because so I mean, guys, uh, we, we have a little bit of a special guest uh, in here today that uh, I think you guys will like to be uh, happy to hear from long story short. Didn't mean to run us off topic too much, sure, but uh, sure. the, the point of this call is, you know, business development stuff and what do businesses need to build on top of BCH. Well, uh, someone who knows a thing or two about uh, building big giant businesses with, you know, huge millions and millions of users around the world. Uh, we have uh, Kim.com is on the call with us here. So hey, welcome. Hi, Kim. Hi, guys. I'm just uh, listening welcome. in with interest. Go ahead. 
Yeah, all right. <laughs> welcome, welcome. Uh, and yeah, just to make sure everybody knows, uh, this is being recorded. This is actually the first of these commerce meetings that's being recorded. All of them previously have been private. So, all right. So welcome. It's good to good to have you. Um, <laughs> yeah. So payments and transparency. I'm with you, uh, Cameron. And and you know we have discussed that aspect of um, kind of being uh, what what's the word that we use? Um, un uncompromising, right? Just yeah, yeah, no, just unap unapologetic. unapologetic, unapologetic. Yeah. I can't even remember my own words. Uh, unapologetic is the word and, and saying, you know, th this is what we do and this is how it works. And these are uh, the properties it has. And and that's just what it is. And that's who we are. And 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 uh, not trying to, to really beat around the bush with it, because things are kind of coming out on the table around mm. now with with world events and AML and KYC and uh just uh, a lot of things are, are are all all the the cards are starting to come onto the table so maybe it's the time to just be unapologetic and say yeah this is what we do we're transparent we're fully transparent mm. nice okay so, so in this in this theme of uh making things being ready for regular businesses this this actually is what speaks to my heart so you know you're talking earlier about you know you know how exciting it is to do payroll and all this kind of stuff I'm going even duller than that, man. <laughs> so, <laughs> Take me um, down to boring town. Please. Yeah, well, well, actually, I, I thought I was going to have it done last night, but I, I got distracted, so I'll have it done this weekend. I'm about to publish what I titled the, the BCH Non-Functional Manifesto, which is going to be the most dull flip starter ever proposed. And it is entirely focused on the non-functional aspects of our ecosystem um, because – what what I discovered is also somebody who had a company that tried to adopt BCH. It's incredibly painful to you know let's think of even if you're a development organization, which a lot of companies aren't even actual development organizations. If they don't have experience with with people who are really intimately aware of how UTXOs work and how Bitcoin works all the way back to the thing, it is a four to six month investment before you can start if you're educating yourself from scratch because because of all the non-functional aspects, right? The non-functional aspects are the qualitative aspects of availability, reliability, testability, um, general standard procedures that have to be present that any other development organization that's commercial does is completely absent in our, in our ecosystem. And therefore also it's almost impossible to find developers who are competent at BCH, you know, for people to hire. Like if I want to scale up my uh, development team with a bunch of BCH programmers, how do I find them, um, you know, or, or how do I how do I train them up? And so that that is that is what this manifesto is go specifically going to be about. Is you know, and and these are all the non sexy things, right? Everybody who is a BCH developer wants to do the cool new features, but we do the cool new features, but we don't we don't architect in scalability. You know, the the whole reg test mechanism is the first thing that we had. We have to have isolated dev test environment that works really well and is easy to spin up. And so we did the BCH toolkit. That was the first project that my that my team did because if we don't have repeatable uh, unit and integration testing, we don't we don't have a project as far as our development processes goes. And we're not the only ones. That's the majority of of the world that knows how to do proper development. And you can't do that on on top of BCH. Ethereum is kind of where you have to go to because it's got the only thing that's got any tooling, and their tooling is pretty crappy. I mean, we we. I did a lot of Ethereum development, and we did a lot of investment in improvements in into that. Um, so th this is where it's going to go. This is the direct, and you know, I'd be happy to talk about it more. But it's 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 dull, right? It's not you're not going to get any exciting uh, open source developers who's going to jump in and say, "This is what I want to spend the next year uh, focused on." But we want to do this in a manner where we're going to set we're going to set standards and and show how it's done. And show the value to the individual developer so that they will adopt this for themselves. So, so hopefully it just becomes things like everyone now uses Docker, which is a great thing. Hopefully some of these other techniques and processes will be adopted by developers, around, you know, in, in general. Hopefully people who are funding development will insist on some of these standards, right? Like I need to have 100% unit test coverage on the code base. Well, that's what allows it to be extensible and to have legs rather than be abandoned all the time, right? So we, we got like with with the Electron Cash SLP fork, you know, Electron Cash is going forward and, and doing fine, but unfortunately the way the SLP fork was done, 
there's a tight coupling between the UI code and, and the back end code. And if they had done unit testing, if they had a, a uh, repeatable test environment and were forced to be able to execute all that code in an in a um, automated manner, they would have never been able to go that far, that direction. They would have had to refactor the thing and make it sustainable. Now mm -hmm. there's no way those code bases can ever be merged back again. And the SLP version of Electron Cast is, is turned into abandonware. Um, so this kind of stuff will will help prevent that kind of thing from, from happening is, is what I'm hoping. And also make it attractive for, uh, you know, regular development companies to target BCH um, as, as the ultimate target is where they want to do their transactions, which gets into, okay, you know, how do I add BCH as a, as a payroll uh, mechanism? If you have tooling that supports the ability to test this and do this, you will see that people who are writing normal accounting software, you got to make it easy for them to incorporate BCH into the system. Without a, without a local dev test environment, you know, BCH developers are coding on the mainnet and spending real money when they write the code. This is unimaginable to, to me, and, and it's not anything that any real company would ever even consider doing. Yeah. And the cost of getting a local network is just is, is, is nuts. So, you know, we've turned that into a three command line prompt and it, and it, and it works, but we got to maintain that, right? We got to keep on taking the patches because we, we're, we're coordinating like eight different packages in order to do this because you got the SLP support and, and SLPDB and, and, and all that and the fulcrum indexer and we want to support multiple nodes. Um, so this kind of stuff, we want to make a thing. And so I'm hoping it gets some traction. I'll post it up on our on our GitHub, and then I'll make a, a BCH uh, research, BC, uh, BitcoinCashResearch.org link that will focus on it. So hopefully we can get some conversation about it. But then That's I, right. I want to host. I, I will host a, a television format thing using our platform here in in a, in a week or so to to do this. So great! I, I'll be looking forward to that. And I, Ben, I, I wanted to mention uh, reinforce two of the things you said or. or the the thing about SLP, <clears throat> um, the the SLP electron I think will eventually be probably recoded. It'll be adapted into the the main electron. So I just wanted yeah. to make sure to anybody who's listening that that's not SLP isn't just going to go poof and disappear. It's just Correct. that the, those two code bases aren't going to re re merge together. That's just not going to work technically that way. But a bigger point that you mentioned, which I think is worth reiterating, is um. Uh, that even Ethereum, which has had so much investment, um, has not had investment in these types of things that we're talking about, which is actually using uh, crypto for commerce and regular business and regular day-to-day -day things. Um, yeah, that's just not been really applied very much anywhere in crypto. Uh, so I, I think it's, a, it's another opportunity. Those boring things is another opportunity for Bitcoin Cash to be a leader where we actually have that kind of laser focused vision, right? Like we're trying to be high utility, useful in commerce, useful for business. Um, it's not really that sexy of a thing, but nobody's doing it. So, so it's another opportunity for us. All right. And you, and you see when, like when the NFTs became popular, uh, you know, during that, during that burst of activity, uh, we lost a real chance to be the premier platform for NFTs um, because they all got locked up because the wallet, wasn't able to verify. And so we went ahead and we, we forked the the Electron Cash SLP and we turned into a Electron Cash SLPDB so it would use the SLPDB indexers to unlock people. So there were several people who, you know, and, and it's not like we were wanting to support this long term, but it was just to get people to be able to do the thing. You know, when, whenever we have some really cool innovation, like, you know, smart BCH is is coming out, that's going to be, that's going to attract a lot of developers. They're, they're going to be curious to try that out. Mm -hmm. Um, when, when, you know, if PMV3 comes out next May, if we don't have the infrastructure so that this stuff can, can scale, if we don't have a, a financial incentive for people to, to participate in the infrastructure and extend the infrastructure so that scalability and availability of these core systems, uh, is just a given everyone just trusts that it's there because there's a financial mechanism incentive for all the participants to, to, to do that right then we're never going to get the kind of traction and adoption that our technical capabilities would would enable. And so that's that's, that's kind of the theme that, that I'm pushing. That's what I hope everyone will do in this group, right? The, the, the people who are actually involved in commerce need to have a voice and need to make sure the voice is heard and not 
um, uh, and I've said this many times before, but the developers, some, some people demonize developers, like developers don't know what they're doing and they, they, they try to control the, the, uh, the financial aspects or the economic aspects and stuff like that. And it, it's really the reverse of that. It's more like nobody else has been involved. Developers are the only ones who are involved the whole time. So of course they're the ones who are, who are setting the policy. But the thing is, developers know that they they don't even want to be doing that stuff, right? So yeah, right. businesses that's need right. to step up and um and make sure the voices. Yeah, devs, devs want to do the cool geeky stuff, and um and this ain't it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> this yeah. is dull, so, dull, dull. But they'll they'll be happy <laughs> to work quick, on the thing. It becomes when they, more than eighty percent of the effort is the non functional support. Yeah, you're trying to do something that scales really wide. Devs are actually happy to work on that stuff when they know it's important. And also, you know, like any other regular human who isn't independently extremely wealthy, right? They, when they can support themselves doing it. So that's where, where we come in to come up with business models that actually make use of the core values of, of Bitcoin, cash, crypto, whatever, and, uh, and bring it to the market. So actually on that point, I wanted to ask um, if anybody, so uh, I think most of us probably know what each of us are, are working on the, the main things, but is anybody working on something that's kind of under the radar, but you can mention or something that's interesting in commerce, some kind of business ideas or investments, that kind of thing that's going on with you. Does anybody have something like that? So for general protocols, something going on um, somewhat under the radar, just because it's our, our development process is we, we understood that, uh, um, the, the current generation of apps that are possible with Bitcoin Cash is very limited because of that uh, stop on development in 2017. Um, and just basically UTXO, uh, all the potential of UTXO has not been realized in any way over the last three, four years. And uh, we're trying to reverse that and um, build up a wallet stack that makes all of that you know, scripting and so forth, all of that capability available to any app. Because right now what it is, is there's, you, you have this app idea and you have all this potential and there's a huge um, technical gap between them where uh, you've got to cross quite a chasm and learn a huge number of skills and a, a pretty deep set of knowledge to be able to figure things out and make it all work. Because the available tools all work at this level or at this level, and there's nothing in between. And so we're working on building up a stack that's going to basically make that infrastructure available at the right levels and the right abstractions so that people can build an app without having to become Bitcoin Cash experts. Um, and it, it's a little different from what Mainnet is doing. So we're not trying to compete with Mainnet or do the same things that they're doing. Um, it's, a, it's a different uh, issue to, to what that is doing. So that's something that we're working on. And then personally, I'm... Um, working on finding small entrepreneurs. So I just look for people who work hard and uh, are good communicators. And then I try to work with them to come up with some kind of unique uh, investment opportunity or uh, business model that will work in their kind of micro situation. Um, so looking for that kind of opportunity and helping people build those up. If anybody has seen the Ali crypto, the tennis thing, um, uh, Molecular uh, was the main person, but Molecular and I helped them to, to develop a kind of a mini business model around their tennis promotion and things like that. So that's the kind of stuff I'm working on these days. So, so, so how is general protocols? You, you say it's not the not going on the main net. Is, is this is stuff that you intend to run on the, the normal BCH? Or? Sorry, no, no. Main net is the name of a project run by the guy who operates read cash and noise cash. Oh, okay. It, it's a, it's a, it, it's a, it's a API layer at the very top that, that makes it easy to do certain things, but those things that you can do are quite limited. Right. So, so what, uh, so I, I, I've <laughs> looked, looked at some of the source code of, of, you know, how, how are you guys are, are doing your stuff and you know, the, the crazy workarounds you have to do because, you know, math is broken. On the on, on the VM and and, and stuff uh, is, is 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 nuts and this this is definitely something that has to be addressed. I'm hoping that that's part of what that's why I also asked the PMV three guys to split out their integer 
their, their math solution as a, as a separate chip, just because that it's critical and important in and of itself. And so I hope that gets in for May and that will greatly reduce your code complexity. But it is, you know, the, the, the limitations of the VM, which, you know, there, there's, there's right reasons for it to be limited because, you know, we, we don't want the full Turing completeness. You know, we want, we want the protection and safety that it provides, but then there's also, you know, like, okay, I can't do multiply and divide. <laughs> you know, that's, that has nothing to do with that. That's a, that's a solely different issue. Um, has to be addressed. I'm, I am, I am, I, I'm feeling good that by this coming May, we'll have changes in, in the VM that will do this. But the but now the expressiveness, uh, like of what PMV three does with the with the contracts on there, it's a really complex thing for it, it's it's beyond what a normal programmer is going to be. We have to have a higher level of yeah. expression to do that. And my my actual my actual thing that I'm most interested in is is language design. And I I was a fourth programmer from back in the early eighties. Nice. Of course, fourth is a stack machine. The EVM and and the Bitcoin systems are stack machines underneath. They're kind of broken stack machines. It's very apparent that the people who created those had never actually used anything to the extent of being like a, a hardcore yeah, fourth program. Yeah, it, it was pseudo, pseudo fourth. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the, the, the whole thing about fourth is that a real good fourth program, you don't write much code in fourth. What you do is you create a DSL, a domain specific language in fourth, and then you write your app in the DSL. And so I've been creating a type safe language called actor fourth, um, which is, is like fourth, except where it's got a very strong expressive type system. And it's intended to be able to target initially the EVM is when I started it. Um, but then fees went up and it became impractical and uh, I got I got turned on to, to BCH and we switched over to that. And so hopefully the idea is you can write something in a, in a higher level language and it'll compile down to to uh, to uh, cash uh, to big on cash script um, and be able to do all those you know all that all that juggling and crazy stuff that, that you guys are having to do manually which is there's no way we're gonna get regular people to do right. that exactly I, yeah. I, I think it sounds like it sounds like you're trying to can you maybe this is too technical for this thing we can talk offline but I'd be curious what your model is for addressing that expressibility problem because that sounds like that's you're attacking at the same attacking the same problem from a different direction we're, we're attacking I, I it from the bottom up instead of from the top right. down um, it's typically been attacked from the top down, like, hey, I want this app to do this thing and uh, give me a layer that does that. But when you do that, it doesn't really uh, mesh with how UTXOs actually work, right? right? So we're building from the bottom up and saying, this is all the power that's available to you with UTXO. We're going to make all that power available at every, at every layer, um, bring it all the way up to the top and make sure that uh, smart contracts have secure ways of trusting them and uh, establishing trust and building transactions between people and that kind of thing. But yeah, you're right. This is probably not the right place for that specific discussion. Actually, we're running up on, on one hour and I wanted to ask one more question. Um, so Roger and, and Kim, you guys are in the room. If, uh, if you have any thoughts or kind of closing thoughts on what it is Bitcoin Cash, businesses, ecosystem, developers, whatever could do? What are, what are the most important next steps to, to make it friendly to business and to make it uh, actually start to be, um, you know, to, to make commerce start to work with crypto? Yeah, I think it's already great for business. Um, nice. You know, what's important is uh, that we get more adoption, more users, more vendors to sign up to it. And uh, the easiest way to do that are some low-hanging fruit that Roger and I are working on. For example, in the gaming industry, you know, gamers uh, these days, uh, they want to make money while gaming. So they should be having options to sell the loot that they earn inside the game. And, uh, you know, the best integration for that would be Bitcoin Cash. Um, also in the streaming sector, you know, a lot of people are streaming video now, st streaming their gaming. Uh, so we're creating uh, tools for streamers to um, allow them to rain BCH on their entire community. 
and on members of the community to rain Bitcoin Cash onto other members of the community and therefore create a bit of a, a hype and uh, get everyone to sign up to uh, BCH. So there are a number of different projects uh, that Watcher and I are working on to make sure that we get uh, you know more adoption and more users into BCH. I think businesses already have a, a really good solution if they once they implement BCH, it's pretty straightforward. And just one other fun tool that uh, I'm, uh, should be ready by the end of this month for the first test is uh, basically you can take whatever mailing list, you import your mailing list with, you know, 100,000 email addresses, and then you can send uh, one of those, you know, if you're familiar with gifts.bitcoin.com, you can send a QR code with a private key uh, that's unique to each, you know, you can send a dollar to 100,000 people on a, on a mailing list, so it costs a hundred thousand dollars, but anybody that doesn't claim it after you know thirty days or whatever, you can just sweep the funds back to your to your own wallet there too. So it's going to be a really powerful onboarding tool for you know any sort of new product that anybody wants to to promote. So like currently with you know Google AdWords or you know apps in the Apple App Store, they'll charge you you know per per impression or per however many impressions, and like maybe you wind up spending you know a couple of dollars per per install you get. Well, well now you can just pay the person directly. Uh, in the cryptocurrency, and so I think this is going to be pretty popular. And so uh, Mate Toke has been uh, project managing that, and it uh, looks like we're going to have it ready uh, around the end of the month. So that will be exciting as well. That is a great idea. Yeah, I really appreciate you guys working on the larger scale stuff that it's only possible um, up there. Um, yeah, those onboarding efforts like uh, Noise Cash, Read Cash, what you're talking about, the mailing list, the gifts at Bitcoin.com, those are huge as a kind of non-standard new next generation onboarding type techniques, right? That haven't been possible in the past. It's fantastic. Can, yeah, can, I, send an NF, can I send an NFT out on that mailing list thing rather than just Bitcoin Cash? Can I send an SLP NFT? Um, I think we'll be able to set that up in, you know, version 1.1 or version 2.0. But uh, f in the first version, it'll just be Bitcoin Cash. But uh, I don't see why not. I think the only thing will be uh, the wallet that's claiming it will have to recognize that there's an NFT token or a SLP token at that address or the address for that private key. Shouldn't yeah, so be a problem. Our, our, our ticketing system, uh, our tickets are NFT SLP tokens. Um, so that would be a way of distributing... Uh, tickets, especially for like general admission stuff. Okay. Happy to connect on that front and, and nice. build the, the tools that businesses actually need to do the things they're doing. So Nice. All right. Okay, guys. Well, I don't want to keep everybody, so I'm going to stop the recording now. And then uh, anybody's welcome to hang out if you want uh, and, and take off if you want. So thank you, everybody, for your time. Really appreciate it. And it was a good discussion. Thanks, everyone. Yeah, thank you for the great yeah. work you guys are doing. Keep it up. Okay. Thanks. Take care. Thanks for the invite.